Hey, 8th grade, I'm going to do some of the solutions for the uh, work and power practice problems that we had the other night. Um, I'm just going to do the hard ones, not go through every single one, because I think most of them we did pretty well with. Um, so starting with number three here, where Paul hit a 125 meter grand slam in game two, he did 3,000 joules of work, what force? Um, so this is just using uh, the work equation backwards. Um, first, let's remind ourselves work is force times distance. So in this instance, we have distance right there, and we've got work right here. So we're solving for force. So if we have 3,000 joules is 125 meters times a distance. So we just divide both sides by 125 that'll cross out, and distance will equal, if I'll be able to write, 24 newtons. Sorry about that, my cursor stopped working there. Um, for number seven, down here. Mr. Z holds 200 kilograms above his head for five seconds. What was the work done? So let's set up the equation work equals force times distance. So we're solving for work. Uh, this is mass, so remember to get it to force, or weight due to gravity in this point, right, because we're talking about lifting something up against gravity. So we would take 200 times 10 for the acceleration due to gravity. And then we multiply that by distance. And we realize at this point that there was no distance because he didn't lifted three meters or anything like that, he was holding it above his head. So distance is zero. So 200 times 10, 2000 times zero is zero. So there's no work. Because he doesn't move the box at all, and all that we are concerned about in this problem is that he held it over his head, there's no work done. Um, if in a previous problem it had talked about him lifting it above his head, that would then mean that he did work. But in this case, right here alone, he's not doing any work. Um, for number eight, we've got Mrs. Oldham. Has a mass of, I want to underline that word, a mass of 55 kilograms and climbs upstairs that are 30 meters tall. Then how much work was done? Um, so we're again solving for work, and we need the force. Well, we have mass of 55 kilograms, so how do we convert that into force? We multiply acceleration, right? Mass times acceleration is force. And then we can multiply that by distance. So you multiply all three of those things together, um, and you are left with 16,500 joules as your answer. Uh, let's do number nine. <clears throat> If 100 joules of work are done by lifting a box 1.5 meters, then how much mass was the box? So again, I'm going to underline this to remind myself that we're not just solving for force or weight. Um, so we've got work, 100 joules. We've got distance, 1.5 meters. And we're looking for force. So divide both sides by 1.5. And that'll give us a force of 66.7 newtons approximately. Now we've got force due to gravity. We want the mass, so we can divide it by 10, the acceleration. It'll give us 6.67 kilograms. And that'll be our answer. Um, remember, any time in these problems that we are given or we're solving for mass, um, remember that force is mass times acceleration. And when we're talking about these problems and we're talking about lifting something up, we are talking about force due to gravity. Another word for that is weight. Remember, there was a previous video on what is weight and it's force due to gravity. So this acceleration will always be 10 meters per second squared um, because that's the rate at which everything accelerates due to gravity on Earth. Um, Number 10, right there. You're hurrying to physics class, as you always do, because you're so excited to work on physics. Um, 
all together the food in the binder weigh 22 newtons so they gave you the force it's not mass this time so that's nice how much work is done in the books when you walk 80 meters along the hall go upstairs 20 meters high, or 12 meters high and turn right for an additional 15 meters to class well as we talked about the other day when you're carrying a weight whether that's your body or whether that's um, an actual box or something like that if you're going straight if you're walking along the floor you're not actually doing work you have to be lifting something up providing a force in the same direction as the distance um, so we can cross this one off and cross that one off because you are not applying the force in the direction that the object is moving um, when you are going up the stairs just like in our lab now you are doing work and you're applying a force in the direction that the object is moving. So we have a total of 22 newtons. Work is force, 22 newtons, times distance, times 12 meters. Now we can solve for the amount of work. It comes out to 264 joules, and that would be our answer. Uh, to skip on to the next set of problems, Let's come down here. I just want to point out for these ones, um, we are again looking at a mass. So refer to the previous problems like eight and nine, where we convert mass to force. Um, we already did a couple problems with, with that, so I'm not going to go through that again, but I just wanted to make that note. Um, for number six, while playing um, 17 straight hours of Wii, Mr. Wallaby successfully raised his arm to scratch his head 187 times. If he raised his hand 1 meter and his arm had a mass of 2.3 kilograms, how much power was used? So this is a really long um, problem altogether. Um, we need to figure out the force, the distance, the work, and then the time to figure out the power. Because remember, power is work divided by time. Um, so first we have to solve for work. So we know that the distance is one meter, so if we're solving for work, we've got one meter as the distance, and now we need to figure out the force. We have the mass of 2.3, we'll multiply that by 10 for our acceleration due to gravity. Um, that will give us a work of 23 joules. Um, that is our work but now we need to figure out the total work done. How many, that's how long, or that's how much work it takes to lift his arm one meter. But he did this 187 times. So he did this a lot in those 17 hours. So it takes 23 joules, uh, takes 23 joules to lift your uh, arm once, but he did it 187 times. So that gives us a total of 4,301 joules for our total work that he did in those 187 times lifting it. Now we can divide it by time. 17 straight hours. But remember that with our time, the units is seconds. So we're not just dividing it by 17, we have to divide it by the number of seconds. So 17 hours times 60 minutes times 60 seconds, right, to convert it all the way to seconds, and we're left with 61,200 seconds. So this is not going to be a big number. Uh, what we're left with is 0.07 watts. That's how much power he was using to raise his arm above his head. And that number makes sense because if you think about it, it really doesn't take that much work to lift your arm once, and if you do it 187 times but over 17 hours, you're really not doing that work at that great of a rate. Um, you could probably lift your arm a hundred times in five minutes or something and that would actually be some real work. So the next one we'll do is number seven. Uh, that involves Superman moving a car with 2700 newtons of force on a track 500 meters long taking 32 seconds to do so. So how much superpower is exerted by Superman? Very clever. Um, so first we need to figure out work, right, because we don't have that yet um, to divide by time. So here's our force, our distance, and here's our time. So we take 2700 times 500, that gives us work. If we divide that whole thing by 32 seconds, that will give us our power. 
and that comes to uh, 42,187.5 watts. Um, in this one, you do the same thing to find his new and improved work, um, or sorry, new and improved power, and then you subtract it, subtract this answer, um, and that will give you his increased, right, because you're not just solving for how much power he used, but his increased power. I missed that the first time as well. Uh, in number nine, if a man slowly lifts a 20 kilogram bucket from a well and does six kilojoules of work, so a thousand joules is one kilojoule, how deep is that well? So the first thing that I like to do is always just label things. Um, so work, they tell us how much work they do. Six kilojoules, so if one kilojoule is a thousand joules, let's just convert that now. So that's six thousand joules of work. Um, and let's figure out what the force is because they give us some of that. It's a 20 kilogram bucket. Multiply it by 10 for acceleration due to gravity, and we're left with 200 newtons. Um, now we can start solving for distance, right? Because how deep is the well? That's really just asking for how far down. What's the distance that the bucket travels? So if work is force times distance, let's just plug that in. 6,000 equals 200 times the distance. Divide both sides by 200. At distance, we are left with 30 meters. Um, the rest of the problems here all use the same concepts and the same types of solutions. Uh, so I'm not going to go through the rest of them, but I think we did pretty well on these in general. So these few solutions here should help you figure out the rest of them if you've got any questions. Um, if you can't figure out any other ones, please feel free to shoot me an email or come see me before or after class. Thanks.